don't need bigger knife. Bigger yeah. knife. Greedy. Don't worry, like... go down here. <laughs> yeah, hopefully not. <laughs> Greetings, everybody. We are here once again on our Sunday evenings to entertain all of you silly people, because I'm assuming you are if you're watching us. <laughs> Today, I was out playing with Dennis, smashing some pumpkins and cutting them up and stuff like that, so my carry today is my Cold Steel <laughs> Warhammer. <laughs> all right. You know, I never thought about... That is an option for my daily carry today. But... Oh, it's it's a nice easy daily carry size. Um, wait a minute, that's an option? Yeah. I'm going to get my pole axe. <laughs> <laughs> it's much as fun. Oh, it's a wrap that I did up. I just did a uh, simple wrap underneath with the crisscross. Nice. And then I did do like the, can get the lighting on it. Yeah. Can't really get the That's lighting right. on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's up enough that it's still easy to wield one hand, but enough room for a two-handed. And yeah, nice. it smashes pumpkins it's good. To get both hands on it. It's oh yeah. Important. yeah, damn straight. Dennis. Yeah, Dennis, you should jump in next. All right. Well. Um... I was carrying several things, including shiny war sword, which if you checked out my Instagram, I did put a quick picture up. But more importantly, um, I'm carrying a Dechanto bailout. Mm -hmm. So there's smutch on the edge, but that's because I'm stropping it right now. So deal with it. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So tell me what you think about that. Uh, yeah, most definitely. I'm curious as to whether or not um people might want that as an option they should I mean, don't ask me to do it again no I mean, <laughs> a couple more times that people ask me to but but i mean like from benchmade i wonder if mm -hmm. there's going to be pushed to be like what about something that's not a tanta just out of curiosity um and then for me i'm carrying something a little bit different today um i i may have made something happen um oh yeah oh yeah i, I turned a 909 into a swayback that is fair um that's uh quite the transformation like it was a full moon last night so we got some werewolf <laughs> shit going on mm -hmm. does it turn back and like only every 28 days like it hasn't turned into a pumpkin yet so i'm not sure what's going to happen there but well, it's a good thing, because I would chop the shit out of Yeah, it. yeah, I was just going to say, a good thing, man. <laughs> Speaking of chop, this thing is so slicey. If I didn't give it a 10 for cutting, I should have. Yep. You didn't, so you were wrong, obviously. <laughs> Looks okay. Looks okay. It, it may have been taken apart and polished and reassembled. That is fair. Are we saying hi to anyone here, or just ourselves? Uh, just ourselves. We're talking in chat right now. Yep. And yeah, Joe, um, the magic uh, ingredient here. Is that what's going on? I don't know. We're no, yeah. Joe, so we have no, uh, no. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know what this is, but <laughs> apparently that's the word it, I'm looking it for. Accurately describes Joe, though. That's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just about to comment on Joe's absence, and he is. Uh, celebrating with his girlfriend. It's her birthday. Well, it was last weekend, I believe. And off for a dinner and whatnot with her. So he is gone for the evening, and I'm running the show. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> um, we do have some folks in chat. Ben, what's going on, brother? How's it going? Um, we didn't go live on the live one. Apparently, people were waiting. Um, Things happen. Yeah, we yeah, like I, go. yeah, like I just mentioned, it's me running the show, so <laughs> we're oh, live. It, was, yeah. it happened. Yeah, the important thing happened. <laughs> um, and then we got Mike Lee's in chat. Mike and Logan is here. Say hi to me. Yeah. Hi guys. Good day. Mike uh, picked up a seven oh seven. Just recently moved back to the hometown, nice. and uh, cool. yeah, glad you're joining us, guys. 
Cheers, brother. Good day, good day. What are the three of you guys uh, carrying tonight? The threes. I might have, I might have ruined the surprise by saying ZT seven zero seven, but you know, we'll <laughs> see what happens. There. But, I mean, it's definitely not the wrong answer. <laughs> That, that's a sweet little blade. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, I, I can't stop playing with this thing. <laughs> between the texture between both of these, I can't stop. I'm going to wear the finish off completely. That is fair. You got to keep your hands busy somehow. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Are we going to get this first part started here? Or... I guess so. That's probably a good yep. idea. Yep. Before, but before we do get too far with that, I'm going to implore everyone to make sure that you like and subscribe, or else every Halloween, when you go to go carve a pumpkin, it will always be rotten on you. No matter how clean and crisp and fresh it looks outside, as soon as you cut in, rotten. Like and subscribe. And then you can give those to us so we can chop them. Yes. <laughs> Apparently people joined the other video that wasn't actually a live video. Um, and they were just talking bad shit about us in chat. Nice. <laughs> they said they were having a lovely chat. And I assume that means they were just talking terrible things about us. We were live at 7.15 for the first time ever. Indeed. All right. It actually happened on time. Yeah. On the wrong channel. On the wrong channel. No, that's... no, it was the right one. Yeah, just, just. It just wasn't the couple, the other one. couple videos trying to go up at the same time. Something I don't know. <laughs> Ben's calling BS. Rude. <laughs> He's probably accurate though. He's probably accurate. True. Well, no, actually, we're live at, at you know, seven fifteen. Mm-hmm. Just not on the stream that everyone had already clicked on. Yep. And not only were we live at 7.15, we had audio right away, too. <laughs> that, is, that is a rarity on our channel. But, you know. Hey, we did it last week. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. But it wasn't on time. <laughs> it's one or the other. You don't get both. Except for tonight. And apparently they were ragging on the Dallas Cowboys in chat, which, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that and... hand egg is one hell of a game. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Cold Steel Ranch Boss, you say? Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um, you just saved me from Justin's comment in chat, so I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, Justin's here, so it's official that we don't need to keep reading the chat. It's pointless at this point. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, Mr. Fisk is saying, where is Joe? Uh, he got swallowed up by aliens, and uh, he'll be back next week. Indeed. This is just a uh, close-up of his chinchilla's um, mouth, I guess. I don't know. Dirty. That's what you get from fourth street. <laughs> Something like that. Indeed. Um, so where do we want to start for the review of the ranch boss that we're doing this week? I'd say Dennis, because he bought one. I did. Okay. Yep. I bought one pretty much as soon as they came in. So um, I think um, apparently Mr. Fisk is going to dock us two dollars and fifty cents on Patreon because <laughs> a quarter of our pokey. Yep. There is one third off of the pokings. So, but that gives you like a breather. One quarter. Instead one, of like. One quarter off. One quarter. Not one, one third off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm giving way too much credit for Joe, that's for sure. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a quarter. He doesn't deserve that extra 8%. <laughs> Um, so my own score, yeah, I probably scored it um, relatively low, to tell you the truth. Uh, I tried to give it um, some sort of fair shake, uh, but I scored it a 69, which is a good solid C. 
Giggity. Giggity, giggity, giggity. Yeah, that's right. 69. <laughs> 69. Uh, uh, so... Cost of materials is I gave it an eight. Uh, this thing, not that great of materials, not that high a cost. Like, how do you score it? That was the tricky one. I bounced between a seven and an eight on that one because I was like, honestly, this thing is plastic handles. It's Dell ribbon. It's just stainless steel thrown together. SK five is not expensive, but they're not asking much for it. And I mean, whether you want to call the leather sheath real or not. Uh, it's still included in the price of a very inexpensive knife. So is it leather? Yeah, it <laughs> says that it's leather. I think it is actual leather. I gotta be honest. Anyway, fit and finish of five. That's the big one to note. Um, I took this knife apart as soon as it came in, um, because of one of the other things that I'm gonna mention. But when I came came apart, it was one of the grossest knives I've ever taken apart. There was literally mud inside of it. Like it was gross. So fit and finish wise, um, yeah, CRKT can make all the soft screws they want. At least you don't know, have to take like take stuff out of it, right? So uh, cutting ability, it's a buck one ten cutter. It's that's what it looks like. That's what it cuts like. That's good enough for me. Uh, ergonomics, it's neutral, and we've talked about neutral handles before. It's all good. Uh, the lockup and actuation is where it seriously. I gave it a six. Um, in mine personally, uh, I made a half stop for it. So when you've got the liner, you're trying to press in the liner and push this in, it's got a locker bar on the back of it at the same time, puts a lot of tension. So you're coming at yourself pretty hot. Mm -hmm. So for myself, I put a, a half stop in, so it does stop there and come back down. So. But they're rather than the original one, which is scary when it's coming back on your hand. So I, I gave it a six for that because it is pretty sketchy when you play with it. Uh, personal side of things, uh, middle of the boards, materials, SK5. I'm a sucker for SK5, so that's probably why I gave it a seven and not lower because <laughs> everything else about it is like steel handle and plastic bell rim, whatever, right? So uh, aesthetics, yeah, it's a cowboy knife. I got a little bit of a Bowie Buck 110 on this to it so seven middle of the road there pocketer goes it's a belt sheet that sucks <laughs> it's, yep. you're gonna get a five for that it's and in the pocket it's a heavy bulky stainless steel buck 110 feeling knife so that sucks too right like either way you lose uh ergos personally i probably gave it the same as i did on the objective side of things it's just neutral handle easy to like mm -hmm. and enthusiasm i don't know I bought one right away, so probably seven probably doesn't justify it, but for cheap SK5s that I'm going to mod and I'm also going to put real antler on, I've shown off a couple of pieces that I've already chosen. It's a fun knife to play with, right? So He, he chose some good knobblies. Oh, the nibbly and the knobblies are good. <laughs> Nobbly all up in that. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you can Call it what it is. I don't know if any of you guys have any comments about the scoring. No, no. One, but... Seems all good. So mud on the inside, eh? Jeez, man. Mm. And like there was dirt around pivots and in between liners and uh, in particular I... the lanyard hole. The only thing I have to comment is actually in relation to the mud thing. And you called out CRKT. Didn't they have a uh, or not a sprint run, but like a dealer exclusive one that they did that did actually have a whole bunch of grid inside the pivot. Uh, there, I think it was one of the squids. The carpet yeah. was, was really yeah. gritty D2. when it came out. And I've seen, I've seen grit, and like I've taken a photo, part of Presidio from a factory that had some grit in it, and it happens. But this was literally like, like caked on pieces that got wrapped inside lanyard holes mm. and picked out and you're like literally this is the same crap i scrape out of my boots after a hiking trip fair enough like, it the same out of the mud on the bottom of your boots tonight because the it was soft in my yard right like it looked yeah. seriously like that hey nigel so, is there any way for you to turn up me and dennis yeah yeah i did do some tweaking i think that might have helped okay well just let us know second. in chat guys if that worked yeah let it filter through yeah 
And no, I'm in my room on the other side of the house where my big computer is uh, like hooked straight into the ethernet rather than using Wi-Fi. And because I'm the one playing around working, doing the OBS and stuff like that, I have to be over here in this room with this computer. But if I'm on just my phone using Wi-Fi, I have to be in the other room because I don't get good signal in here and it keeps dropping out on me. <laughs> People complaining about the bricks? Is that what's going on? <laughs> no, I'm just, just asking if uh, he's at Joe's. And yeah, if I was at Joe's, there would be a chinchilla in my lap. There's no way there would not be. <laughs> the only right answer. Yeah. And it would be um, pooping on him. <laughs> I used to have a rat. It's something I can deal with. <laughs> you just feed it back to him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh you, you missed a bit. Here you go. <laughs> it's like a Pez dispenser. <laughs> yep. In reverse. Oh, no, sir. It is nothing. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Don't judge me. Um, Mr. Fisk says he grades the knife 27 giraffes. So... <laughs> That's a thing that has happened out loud in okay. the world. Okay, um, I will find the metric unit of a giraffe because, of course, we have to work in metrics. It's units of 10. And once we figure out the value of a giraffe, then we will figure out the score for you for sure. Mm -hmm. We'll have to come back to that. Um, do you want to go next, next, Nigel? Do you want me to go sure. next? No, I can go next. Cool. Let's pop my score. So, I did one better than Dennis. I gave it a 70. Um, yeah, very, very, very similar scores. Um, as far as the objective side, I think I did do, do a little bit better on the fit and finish than him, just because I didn't have that experience of taking it apart and seeing what was inside and all that. So, I gave it there an was eight. Mud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did give it an 8, but I was flipping and flopping between a 7 and an 8 for the uh, fit and finish. Um, then, yeah, the other low, only low score in the objective side was the, the actuation, like with the point that Dennis was talking about with the fact there's no half stop and the tension they put on that back spring. Yeah, that's a sketchy closing for sure. I don't like it. Nope. <laughs> No, um, personally, yeah, it was mediocre, doesn't really stand out, the aesthetics, it's, it's definitely a cowboy knife and I like parts of it, but I find the handle and the blade are slightly misproportioned and I find it a little awkward. And then the plastic for the handle, so that's where the aesthetics got a six for me. And then the other low score was enthusiasm because... Yeah, for the price point and <clears throat> the plastic handles and the no half stop in it, it's, yeah, I don't overly care. <laughs> the blade, actually, I've got marks on it. I got to feel this crap off. The blade <laughs> actually quite a bit reminds me of my cattleman's knife. I've got mm. painter's tape on it. Just deal with it, okay? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, again, the, mm -hmm. the mismatched and yes, you're right. But it's a thing that happens in traditional and full-size traditionals quite often. Yeah. <clears throat> I think the Buck 110 is a bit of that exception yeah. where they, they tried to even it out a little bit more type of thing, right? So. Yeah. And yes, it does happen. Doesn't mean I like it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. Ball score is up. Um, and what was that there, Dennis? Oh, I was just going to comment on Nigel's score. It's oh. funny that we both gave them personal material choice to a seven. Mm -hmm. I just think that's kind of funny where it's just like, how do you score it? Like it's a plastic stainless steel, but again, exactly. SK5 and yeah, like. And at that price point, it's like, what do I expect? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So. Yeah. Um, apparently I scored things a little bit higher. I thought I was going to be the hater this week. Um, I scored it a 71, which is a C. So we went up accidentally <laughs> in order. Um, oh, I see. 
I was the most hatery. Wow, it was fit. I gave it a five, like compared to <laughs> Nigel's eight, but he was like he did not experience the shocking I, nightmare. That I, <laughs> I feel a little awkward about the nines that I gave it for cost versus material and fit and finish. Um, that probably should have been an eight if I'm thinking about it now. Uh, if you're looking at them in the shop, even they they are gritty when you open and close them. They're not a smooth. Mm -hmm. For me, it was just for what I'm paying for it. It's not that bad, but I should have taken into account the fact that there are other things offered for that same price point that are better. Mm -hmm. And that Easy. would have knocked at least a point off. Yeah, easily better, for sure. Um, I gave it eights for both cutting ability and ergonomic execution, because like you said, it's a neutral handle, um, and it's a nice flat buck 110 blade. Uh, I have Spider or Cold Steel's uh, Broken Skull, which is basically the same knife. I would argue it's a better version of the same knife. Mm -hmm. um, and that thing cuts super nice. Super, super nice. Uncle, um, Uncle Randy disagrees with you, okay? Your fancy plastics and your XHP and your... At any rate, we're gonna talk today about something like you can't measure in numbers, and that's tradition and culture. <laughs> it's the XHP awesome. that really does it. Just hiding that bulge, your husband bulge. That's what does it. On the personal side, uh, things kind of took a bit of a hit. Um, oddly enough, for material choice, I also gave it a seven. Because um, like you said, for cost for what you're getting, SK5 is worth it to me in and of itself, especially as a project blade or something like that, where you're going to swap out the handle scales for something else. Um, it's an easy knife to pick up and mod without feeling too bad if you accidentally do something that ruins it. And I think the other thing you should comment on as well is the fact that with the SK-5, um, Cold Steel getting some heat under the like uh, heat treatment aspect and coming up like gold every time, they're bang on every time they got tested. Mm -hmm. So if you've got SK-5 with a company that knows what they're doing on the heat treatment, I mean, I'll take it over 1095 Pro Van if it's done properly, right? Like, so. Yeah. yeah. I think I like X SK5 more than a lot of other high carbons in my limited experience with it. Um, two for pocket arrows. <laughs> we got to throw that down. Jeez. That, uh, I, I, was, I was thinking about changing it today. And then I thought about it and I thought it's on the personal side and fuck that pouch. Fuck that thing <laughs> all the hell. Um, I'm never going to carry that knife in a pouch. So I want to put it in my pocket. And I actually did put one in my back pocket today. And it is wider than the bottom of my pocket. It actually leaves a gap where there's pocket <laughs> below the knife because it can't reach the entire bottom of my pocket. That's funny. Screw that thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, but ergonomically, it fits the hand real nice because it's our nice neutral handle. Mm -hmm. Did we all throw up eights on both? We sure did. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, we sure did. All three of us threw up eights on ergonomic execution, both on the personal and on the... It's big enough. <laughs> it is. Yeah. yeah, and it's, like you said, super just like neutral. Although, they do throw that hump in there and it doesn't seem to get in the way of any mm -hmm. of our there's enough room on both sides of that hump that most hands are going to fit it no matter what it's a huge sway yeah to take a look at right so yeah apparently mr fisk is going to dock his original score by one muffler so you need to figure out what a muffler to giraffe conversion is as well okay okay yep. no no it's all just equivalent of metric at this point right? <laughs> okay. you just need to have the metric conversion of a muffler at this point compared to the muffler or the metric conversion of a giraffe, like whatever those are, and subtract it and we'll get our answer. I never liked doing imaginary number math. It always hurt my brain. I will I will figure it out. We'll have units of measurement for whatever hell he wants to throw up. <laughs> That's all of you. I'm just gonna laugh. <laughs> I'll figure it out by next week. It's fine. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> and if he wants to have other measurements, we'll add those to the list and we'll have a running list of 
It's three giraffes and a gnome or whatever. <laughs> what did you give it for enthusiasm, Dennis? Um, I think a seven. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. That it went seven, five, six. Like we went the opposite <laughs> direction. Mm -hmm. Okay, the knife itself, um, I probably wouldn't score that high, but the fact that I just bought it right away and I'm going to play with it and I'm going to make it fancier than it actually is gave me more enthusiasm for it than <laughs> you guys, which I didn't didn't jump on that train nearly as quick, right? But no, I'm like SK5, I can clean it out, I can put a half stop in it, I can put natural antler on it and actually turn it into something that although this cold steel pouch does kind of blow, it does fit in a buck 110 pouch really, really nicely. Cool. So even though, like your pocket ergo goes on a two, and on this one, it is super tough to pull in and out, like even if it was on your belt, um, there's a good thing they put a lanyard hole that they could put so much mud into, because after you get the mud out, <laughs> you could actually put the paracord in to get it out of a damn sheath, right? So, um, but yeah. Ben is asking us in chat if there's such a thing as Q&A anymore. Um, we were actually planning on doing a Q&A uh, in the third part of the evening. So if you've got questions, yeah. hold on to them. We'll get back to you uh, in the I'm, third segment. I'm kind Write of, them down so you don't forget. Yeah, I'm kind sense. of almost tempted to assume he meant like quality control, just in the theme of context of the chat and talking about it, mud in the... QC department? Yeah. Instead of Q and A, is that fair? Quality assurance, uh, is that okay? Quality assurance, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the mud thing. Okay. I looked. I I popped open two more and looked at them, and none of them were that bad as the one I got. But the one I got had really nice lockout, and the blade was centered. So I took that without thinking about looking at a lanyard hole. The amount of dirt. What the hell? Yeah. Um, Mr. Fisk is saying in chat, no, they just read their spreadsheet spreadsheets to each other. No, no, we didn't read them to each other. We read them to you guys. We read them to you. <laughs> You're welcome. It's all for you. What do you think? Do you want to buy this knife or don't you? You can now see whether it's worth buying, depending on how I feel or depending on how Paul feels. That's the point of all of this, you sons of bitches. <laughs> Like it's <laughs> what I was gonna say is I'm not really in the um I'm not looking for a project blade at the moment. I have a, a few of my own projects that I want to work on. Um but as a project blade, I really like that knife. As a knife that I would just pick up off the shelf, I probably personally wouldn't buy it, but as a knife to play with and mod and put a different handle scale or Hell, man, well, practice putting different handle scales on more than once and just like perfecting it. It's a mm -hmm. great platform for something like that. I actually Especially... talked to Nigel about getting one of his wood resin glow, even hybrids to put on this. And then I realized the just ridiculous abundant of antler that I have in my garage. <laughs> yeah. And decided to go that route instead, right? <laughs> so, but. So are you going to fill in the nubblies with resin? No. No, no, no I he, am not. He he wants to enjoy the nubbly <laughs> texture. You have to enjoy the nubblies in all of this. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to put the nubblies on, you might as well feel them, right? Exactly. Yeah, rub them up against your cheek a little bit. No. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Mr. Fisk is saying he comes I here to give us that. a hard time, which no. uh, we know, and we appreciate <laughs> it. Um, I... It's Sunday, right? <laughs> <laughs> we come here to give each other a hard time. <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, pretty ben sure Justin. there's just a dozen guys in this chat that just give everyone a hard time. Like it's I was gonna say Ben is saying in chat also that he expects to get sworn at by Dennis at least once per show. Uh, me too. <laughs> and if not Dennis, then you're gonna get sworn at by me. I will drop at least one fuck per we're episode. not we're not monetized here yeah <laughs> we're family friendly indeed uh ben is asking in chat how easy it is to remove the handle scales from um ridiculously easy oh my goodness it's just um, I, 
honestly, I might be able to get some Tuesday pictures. So if you watch the Tuesday episode, I'll try to get some disassembled pictures of how easy it is, but it's a modern traditional and it's all screw construction. Screws are soft as well as being dirty, by the way. That's a fun combination. So um, it's not hard to get them undone because they're pretty good with their Loctite. Cold Steel has never been that Loctite. bad with their Loctite. So, but do worry about oh, yeah. um, like over tightening and things like that, because if you're not careful, you could kind of shifty some star patterns and use a T7 instead of a T6 on one of them. Now, I'm just saying that might, <laughs> that might happen if you're not careful. I see. I see. I have a T7 just for saying. <laughs> That's lucky. It's, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, um, go ahead. No, no, it's all good. Uh, I was just going to say, I'm super happy with it, with the project blade to take it apart, to clean it, um, to put the half stop in, to grind it down. Uh, I even polished it before I put it back together tonight for the show. Um, just so I wasn't worried about the uh, the lock bar like grinding into it as I was doing it, right? So, yeah. although I will say that liner lock without a half stop is sketchy. It's sketchy. I, <laughs> I think that's the I think that's the most noteworthy thing about this knife is needing Please. something like yeah. that. Yeah. The main reason why I don't like that knife is closing it. Yeah. You got some diamond paddles, you got some stones, you got some files, you can make a half stop, sand it down. Yeah, and That's what I was going to say. The, the cool thing about that knife is having watched you put the half stop on, if not that one, other things in your collection recently um, mm -hmm. has opened up new possibilities for knives that might be in my own collection for doing things like that. God, even a Swiss Army knife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you could put a half stop on a Swiss Army if you wanted to. It's really, really rudimentary as long as you got a spring bar action, right? I was going to say, are they screw construction or are they? I have seen people mod and put blades in and different things in and put them back together. I don't know. Well, can, I would watch can. tutorials before I do it. Yeah. But yeah. That's fair. That actually sounds like a lot of fun. I would I would totally be down for putting a half stop on a Swiss Army knife. I might even carry one at that point. If for nothing else than just nostalgia. You gave, you gave a two for pocket or it goes on this thing and you're like, <laughs> I'm just going to throw a Swiss champ in my pocket. We're cool. All right, Zach from Blade HQ. I'll put it in a pouch on my belt. <laughs> and hate every moment of it. True story. Okay, Zach from Blade HQ. <laughs> no, but for both things. Both in the pocket and the belt. For sure. Yeah. But yeah, I... Uh... I was a bit of a hater as far as it not having a pocket clip. Um, but oddly enough, I feel that if I had a pouch like my rustic gent pouch with a clip on it, I would take the clip off this thing and carry it without a clip at all. I, I was going to ask about the other traditionals that we've scored. And we have yeah. scored some other traditionals that didn't have pocket clips and you've never done anything quite as low as a two. Like I'm trying to think of What's other, other than way? other than the rustic gen. Which I scored high because of the pouch. Yeah, I'm trying to think, but there was we have done other traditionals. I know we have, but I'm trying to think of it. Maybe Tuesday's episode will have a blurb where we actually find which one it was. But I'm curious about the score bar of I don't know, honestly. I'm curious too. <laughs> Cause like I said, it's it's weird that on that knife I don't like it. And I, I wouldn't carry this one just loose in the pocket unless I had some kind of leather slip on it. Yep. And I probably wouldn't carry it in the bottom Are of my pocket. Are you talking about your spray back? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just, no, good for you, buddy. Uh, having said that, for buying a spray back. Yeah. Thank you. It, uh, it happened by accident. <laughs> <laughs> That's like um that's what she said having an affair he stumbled <laughs> and she tripped and he fell and next yep. thing you know it's yeah <laughs>
and next thing I knew, it was in my pocket. And... No, in a sway back. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Guy yeah. Ritchie directed that movie. <laughs> I uh, I had that four dollars that uh, that I was given, and I was going to throw it into the pouch where my random cash that I have, just the kind of petty cash for buying a knife if I want to, and I was like, okay, I've got that much money in here. I'm going to bring this with me, and I'm just going to see what it would cost me to buy a sway back. And, uh, <laughs> it was the right number, so. <laughs> So are you going to get blade chops to uh, modify it for you now and straighten it out and shorten it? And... <laughs> no. No, I'm not. <laughs> I am going to use it in the kitchen, though, and cut potatoes and stuff like that and see how I like it as, like, a peel it reverse grip. grip. Yeah, 100%, mm -hmm. as as the sway back is intended. I approve that more than I probably should, you know. <laughs> I'm a dork. And anyway, oh, yeah. Mr. Fisk is saying in chat he's not supposed to tell you that I bought a sway back. I told him yesterday. Nigel knew about it because of yesterday. Um, but I see. I figured I'd keep the secret. What were you saying, Nigel? Oh, I was just about to joke about, oh shit, Mr. Fisk spilt your beans, Paul. <laughs> Then, yeah. then, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, of all the things that Mr. Fisk could do to your beans, <laughs> spelling them's not that bad, you know. Yep. In the context of what you just said, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and I've been practicing. I can, as a righty, actually spidey flick it, like a monster. <laughs> but like only reverse a monster. Look. How am I supposed to stealth peel somebody if I don't do it in a reverse grip? First of all, the term stealth peel <laughs> needs to be addressed here. <laughs> like, <Stealth it's... laughs> Second Look, of all, would... who isn't going to notice you peeling? <laughs> How do you get stealthily get away with that? Like, well, it's... they'll notice the peel in. They won't notice the start of it. That That's the important bit. I mean, you... You did say that it got a nine or a ten on like blade, like cutting execution. <laughs> what was the category? I don't even know. <laughs> cutting ability. Yeah, yeah. You said it should have got a nine or a ten. So maybe you'll get a couple peels in before they notice. Like, yeah. It's XHP is terrifying. Like, I will attest to the fact that XHP is highly underrated as well, mm -hmm. as far as a seal goes, for sure. Yeah. Um, but that has nothing to do with the SK5 Ranch Boss that we're supposed to be talking about <laughs> for the next 10 nope. minutes or so. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. <laughs> the Ranch Boss, you say? Well, you know, all of us gave it very similar scores, but all over the map as far as how we got there. Mm -hmm. I will also say that. Like I said, with a two like, in my, my score, I really thought it was going to end up being lower than that. There is some mm -hmm. big variance between certain categories. Like, what did Nigel score the pocket ergos? You shot a six, I shot a five, I think, and a yeah. two. So none of them are high, but I mean, yeah, that's a big gap between two and five. Yeah, yeah, six. I, my personal feeling, like I said, if it if it was on the objective side, it would have gotten a higher score. Um. But from a personal standpoint, I it was other than like the fact that I'm going to take my thumb off every time I open and close that thing. Yeah. The, the thing that I disliked about it the most was that I I'm never gonna carry it. And then the fit and finish, obviously, because I took mine apart and saw just the horrific mm -hmm. mess that was inside. Uh compared like so a nine and eight and a five, like again, mm -hmm. just all over the map. A little bit. Mr. Fisk is asked, asking in chat if there's a list of all the knives so we can see where they fall in comparison. Um, we do. It's called our videos. If you go to the Poke Factor on YouTube, there's a whole list of videos there. You can watch them all. They, everyone that has a score will tell you. Okay, but having said that, I love the fact that we could actually go back and give scoring ratings blah 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 mm. for the archive type of stuff i yeah. like that well, idea I yeah, really even do. if it's well, just like a, i've saved all mine yeah and even if it's not a breakdown of all the scores even if we jot down that like 
like what final letter score. grade we gave or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, or our average between the four of us yeah. type of thing, and average yeah. out what we give it type of idea. I do actually like that idea yeah, of having I... an archive that you can look at, or going to an episode at the end of this year, the New Year's episode or something like mm-hmm. that, or a live stream where we actually sit down and. Yeah, and I do imagine if we. Down. If we do get like a list compiled up, it will probably be up on the Patreon reward system. So you're in luck, Mr. Fisk. You'll get it. <laughs> uh, we got Matt in chat here, Black Frost. Evening, sirs. What's going on, brother? Glad you could join us. It was fun today. It was fun. Choppy, choppy. Mm-hmm. Choppy, 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 choppy. Some good times. So, do I get to be edited into the video? On Tuesday? Potentially. Maybe if you're the pumpkin. <laughs> Sorry? I'll bring the spray paint. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> Turn well, your orange. I didn't hear what Dennis said, and now I'm getting spray painted, I think. Only, Dennis said, only if you're the pumpkin. If you got edited in. Yeah. Yep, so I'm going to bring the spray paint and turn you into a pumpkin. I'm going to chinqueta a pumpkin, and I'm excited about it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. Ah, why does have... this pumpkin have guts in it? <laughs> for for the record, a pizza slice is a terrible weapon. <laughs> um, I would say it's an even more terrible meal. Yeah. Uh, it depends on who's eating it. <laughs> I mean... It tastes like pennies. Yay! It's like, no, no, that's not the sword you're tasting. <laughs> no. That's the sauce you're tasting. Yes. <laughs> and no, Mr. Fisk, we have not got a Paul Floss video yet. Um, oh! I haven't figured out a way to that. edit that into a, to be a, a thing. <laughs> I, uh, I've been looking for footage. Let's just put it that way. Okay. <laughs> no, I did actually go on the hunt for some Paul flossing footage. Uh, we haven't found any yet, but, you know. Like, just a random guy flossing to put... Oh, no, hand. there's security cameras. We'll find it. We'll find it. <laughs> we'll just leave it there for now. I'm going to be honest. The reason why you haven't gotten a Paul Floss video is because I don't really know what it is or how to do it. And it, <laughs> even if I could do it properly, it wouldn't come out properly because I don't know how to dance. He's so, been spending like, a couple of new practicing up and it's it's not quite there yet. Yeah. He's taking some <laughs> floss lessons. It's uh it's working. It's working. I think Think like the old Dirty Dancing movies, like that, but I'm both Patrick Swayze and the chick. <laughs> who's the towel? <laughs> so, uh, who's, who's lifting who? <laughs> do you just, like, exactly. go run up and do go for the epic lift and just go flying off your balcony? <laughs> That's only, like, four floors down. It'll be fine. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm being threatened in chat by Mr. Fisk. But I better learn. Sucker. Uh, you can't make me. Nobody puts Paul in a corner. Exactly. <laughs> no Nobody puts me in a corner. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think know the... Go ahead. I was just going to say, I think that's a good place to cut it off for the break. <laughs> I agree. Let's do that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, we are going to take our mandated government break here because it is that time and that's what we do. So I know the questions about the ranch boss. If we're good there, no, everyone's no, just no. talking smack about Paul in the chat. We yeah, no, no, no other questions in the chat about it. All yeah. right, all right, good. We're good so, yeah. to go. Yep, yeah, we will be back shortly with everyone. So go fill your drinks and hit the washroom. We shall return shortly here. Let's see if I can do this.